Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Okudowski of WeAreChange.org here at Anarcha Poco, an incredible event. And you guys have a very special treat today as we have an independent media panel right now in this video with, of course, James Corbett of The Corbett Report, Dan Dix of Press for Truth, Josh Sigurdsson of World Alternative Media, and, of course, Josh Friedman, who also works with a lot of really good Really, really good independent media companies, as well as having his own show on YouTube as well. All of the links to these guys will be in the description, and we're going to be getting into extremely important topics when it comes to the fight for free expression and free speech. I'm going to list off three very important questions, go over very important things that you need to know about this very important fight. And first of all, James, I'm going to ask you specifically, uh, what is your alternative to all the censorship that's happening by the mainstream media, essentially just getting a foothold and control of the internet again. Excellent question. On a practical level, level I upload all of my videos to uh, BitChute and uh, Minds.com, and I used to go on DTube, but I can't upload there anymore for some technical reason that I don't understand, so I don't upload there anymore. Too bad for DTube. Um, I do put my articles on Steemit and Minds.com, and uh, interviews, uh, things all basically the same. But I will tell you, the most important thing I do is put them on my own website. Websites, they still exist, people. I, I guess I'm a boomer because I still think websites are important and that's the last line of defense at any rate. It will be censored at some point, but not yet. Before social media gets censored, websites, folks. Uh, Dan, what's your alternative uh, during this purge? At this stage in the game, I'm really focusing on diversifying my video sharing platform portfolio, so to speak. So I'm looking at about seven or eight different platforms right now. When I post daily, I open up seven or eight different tabs on my computer. I've got float.app, pocketnet.app, bitshoot, minds, steam it. Uh, DTube, um, uh, there's probably some I'm even forgetting, but it, I, I think at this stage in the game, you really can't put all your eggs in one basket, you know? We really have to get involved with these, these guys who are, uh, uh, you know, pushing back against censorship. And these are the people we need to support, you know? So I'm kind of getting into all of them in the hopes that one of them will take off. And uh, uh, yeah, if they do, it'll be great to be in on the ground room floor. What's your number one alternative, Josh? Uh, well, I would say a lot of what Dan said I do, I keep a bunch of tabs open, but right now we're so heavily censored, it's about reach right now. It's not about monetization, it's about reach. And so that's why I'm going full steam ahead with uh, float.app, F-L-O-T-E dot A-P-P, um, where for me, I think it's really important. It's, it's replacing Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Tumblr, Reddit, Patreon, all in one, encrypted private messaging, monetization on videos for creators, so there's incentive, super chats with crypto, pledges with crypto, and no algorithm telling you who you can or cannot see. So I'm, I'm looking at float.app right now. I think that's one of the number ones. But I'm on all the other ones as well. I think we just have to diversify and get the reach going because it's, it's the algorithm that's censoring us the most on YouTube. If we can reach people, we can get around that. We can make the money that allows us to continue doing this on a day-to-day -day basis and all will be fine. Josh, too, same question. Okay, right now I see potential in library, L-B-R-Y. I've been working with you a bit on getting the We Are Change channel up there. I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to expect there to be huge growth of the platform, but I am liking it. With regard to not so much reach, but revenue, I think revenue is huge, and I really think an alternative is just for us to build up our businesses so we're not dependent on, on the Googles and the YouTubes for monetization and revenue in general. Yep. For me, give me your emails. I want all of your emails. We have an email list and now they're even screwing us in the email list where all the emails are going into spam and promotions. There's always different waves coming, hitting you with censorship, but it's about fighting back as much as we can. And I think having an email database is a lot better and a lot safer than trusting any other Silicon Valley company that could be bought off or funded by seed f funding from uh, intelligence organizations. Now, the second question that I have for everyone here is what are some of the underhanded techniques you're seeing that not many people are aware of when it comes to censorship? Uh, for me, we just saw Nick Flo Fuentes get his YouTube channel take da taken down. We saw Zero Hedge taken down from Twitter. To me, this is a sporadic kind of fight that can't completely censor everything at once. And this is why we're seeing this slow crawl, which I think is the most important aspect that people should be aware of. What's the most important aspect that you guys think people should be most aware of with this censorship that's happening? 
For me, it's search engine manipulation, algorithm manipulation. I did a v video called We Need to Talk About Search that everyone should talk uh, look at because it's not just about searching for something that you know exists. It's about searching for things that you don't know exist. If you know Corbett Report and you know Century of Enslavement or whatever it is, I'm sure you can find it somehow. If you don't know about that and you're just looking for information about the Federal Reserve, you will not find my documentary anymore. It used to be number one results on YouTube, not anymore. Long term, that's going to be a problem as we move away from uh, physical technologies that we control into wearables and hearables and Alexa, can you show me something about the Federal Reserve? You will never see my work that way. Our Epstein video, national news, international news, you can't find it anywhere. Dan? Same question. Yeah, for me, honestly, what's underhanded is the, the shadow banning that's going on. I mean, it's in the very name. Shadow banning is, is, is uh, pretty telling. And the fact that we have essentially lost 80 to 90% of our audience that we used to have just a couple of years ago. I mean, I got over a quarter million subscribers on YouTube and I'm averaging a couple thousand views per video sometimes. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So what this ends up doing is making it impossible for people to find this information, but the creators are not sometimes not aware that this is happening and they just see their numbers falling and they might start to wonder, is it what I'm saying? I mean, what the heck's going on? But no, they're underhandedly manipulating the system behind the scenes to kind of silence guys like us. So I would say shadow banning is the biggest, biggest problem uh, we're facing right now. Josh? This is exactly why I mentioned reach before because, uh, I, for example, you see on the live analytics, 500 views in the first five minutes of a video and then three hours later you have 1200 views on that video, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, search up my channel and you'll find my channel sometimes six pages in when you type in the actual name. 136,000 subscribers and you can't find it. Um, same thing with uh, just how they uh, stop people from searching up exact titles for your videos. Uh, they, they cut down, for example, 72% uh, of our views came from suggested uh, videos on the side of the, the screen. They're now at 1.2% of our views come from that and that happened overnight. So that's a massive shadow Banning. People need to realize it's all about the reach. It has nothing to do with money. We do this. We None of us started this to make money. We did it to spread a message, and we can't spread that message anymore. So that's why we need to find ways to actually reach people outside of a bubble so that we can actually educate and change the future. Josh, same question. Uh, I agree about uh, search being a huge problem, uh, especially with your videos, Luke. It's become very obvious to me how blatant the, the censorship is when I type in the exact titles and it doesn't pop up. But I'd like to call attention to something that doesn't get brought up so much in this alternative media censorship discussion, and that's class more classic forms of censorship, something I deal with with a publication I work for in California. It's an investigative news publication. Uh, we've been hit with a million dollar judgment on a, a lawsuit that's highly questionable. Uh, the lady I work for who's also been hit by that has had her kids, her grandkids taken away by CPS. So as we're all focused on big tech censorship, which is a huge and always growing problem, there's still classic forms of censoring media that are happening all over the, the world and even in the US. Last very important question. Will we win or will we lose, James? We will fucking win, baby! Stop cursing, you son of... I'm gonna kick... You mother... Anyway, are we gonna win or lose? We will win. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here. Anything else you want to say about the topic? Not at all, CorporateReport.com. All right, thanks. Um, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I mean, I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, I think uh, good, good prevails, you know, in the end. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think we're going to win. Just like James said, I wouldn't be in the fight if I didn't think we were going to win. Um, I think this uh, YouTube situation may backfire on them. I mean, they're really shooting themselves in the foot right now. I think a lot of people are starting to think about migrating off of that platform. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a struggle over the next couple of years, but uh, in the end, we'll prevail. I am optimistic long term, very much not optimistic in the short term. At the, at the moment, it, things do not look good at all. We need to replace the old guard system with a new guard system immediately. Uh, so at the moment, we have echo chambers and then we have YouTube. YouTube lets us uh, reach people, but YouTube is letting us reach less and less people. So I'm, I'm hopeful long term, as Dan said, good triumphs over evil eventually, but for the time being, it's not so good. And we need more people to get involved and help us out in any way that they can. Historically, censorship tends to fail, but I'd say at the moment it's really an uphill battle for any platform that's competing with particularly Google and YouTube. Sweet. I personally think uh, it's definitely going to be a hard fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a difficult uphill battle, but if it wasn't, 
it wouldn't be as fun and as worthwhile as it is. There's times in my career that I had barely any money in my bank account. There's times that I did have money, but the fuel that really keeps us going is not only donations, it's not only support, but also your thoughts and prayers. And most importantly, being the change you want to see with small micro changes, not being afraid to share content, not being afraid to speak your truth. Those are small individual actions that you could take. And because so many of you do, so many of you people share this video, we are still here. That sharing, that that conversation, that kind of uh, not being afraid of getting these ideas out there is one of the most important things you do. And this is why I try to end every single video by saying, I love you guys. Because again, without you, we wouldn't be here. Uh, all the links to these guys' channels will be in the description. So definitely check them out. Uh, last time we even talked and did this kind of media panel, we were like, well, what if we just get one dollar from uh you know for each each one of us that would make a huge 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 difference and it's, it's se se severely like just an uphill insane crazy battle any last words that you guys want to say to the audience about uh, censorship go to float.app i'm at josh sigerson as well as at wam i truly believe that is one of the major uh, uh examples of innovation changing the guard because it replaces all these other social media so i really urge people to go there that's f-l-o-t-e dot a-p-p -P. it's online easy to sign up almost no privacy policy do it guys we gotta go to these platforms if we want to replace these platforms yeah, I would just say start signing up to all the alternatives. Um, there's going to be, if you look at the description in any one of my videos, you'll see links to about seven or eight different new platforms that are uh, starting to emerge. So go there, sign up to these platforms, start subscribing to your favorite YouTubers on these other platforms before they pull the plug. It's really important to uh, hedge your bet against the censorship. At least according to the official story, Facebook basically came out of a dorm room. So you never know which new platform might blow up. Keep an eye on emerging platforms and maybe one catches on. Or there's secret uh, CIA uh, seed funding that comes in, uh, which also should be heavily questioned and investigated. And that's why we're a threat to a lot of big tech companies. But that's why we're here. We're definitely stubborn. We're definitely not going away anytime soon. And uh, this is only mainly because of you. Love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.